Welcome back to Affiliated. I have a very special guest who's flown all the way from, well, not from Brazil, but from Brazil to Orlando to Boise to be here with us, which we're stoked for. Kyle couldn't make it today because he's got a whole bunch of life stuff going on. But Lucas Lino, as you're letting me call yourself instead of Lino, <laughs> the, <laughs> yes. your Latin tongue. Um, but thank you for joining us, Lucas, here today. Thank you so much for receiving me, Thomas, everyone and the ClickBank family. I'm really happy and excited to be here. It's an amazing opportunity to be here. Yeah, no, it's very stoked grateful. To see you're coming. Um, you got a really cool story we're going to dive into. Uh, for some context, Lucas is a Facebook media buyer who just recently hit platinum, but you're doing the kind of scale that could get you to diamond by end of year kind of thing. So you're really scaling up in big ways, and you're really can, seems like you're making all the right moves. You're teaching stuff on YouTube to your Brazilian colleagues out there and the, around the world. So I'm excited to dive in and let our audience learn more about how you've had this success recently. And but I know it's recent is relative, right? Because you've been working at this for a little while now. Yeah, five, to years. Six, five years. Yeah. Five years. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk, let's dive into that. Like what five, let's say six years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. What were you, where were you, what were you doing? What was fueling you? And then what caused the shift to start exploring kind of the affiliate space? Okay. So back in like 2018, 2017, I was graduating from, um, mechatronical engineer it's a robotics engineer oh, cool. and i opened the company like to help like other companies to automate uh, the system and develop some codes and javascript and bootstrap all that and i was like good with numbers at least but i always had the dream like to come here to united states united states because of the quality of life the safety the opportunity i always like love it. even like the rock and roll, the music that I love the most <laughs> is from here. Like, oh nice, yeah. So, what's, the, what's like the main band you kind of drive with? Uh, Rage Against the Machine, oh, like okay, Iron yeah. Maiden, yeah. you know, Linkin Park. Like, I'm a big fan of rock. I'm very eclectic, actually. Yeah, but uh, like the the whole United States universe is universe like always like dragged my attention. And I've been uh, I lived in in Toronto in 2012, so I kind of had the feeling of how is it to live in a top world country and the quality, the safety, I was like feeling really happy over there. And I said, okay, when I went back to Brazil in 2013 and I said, okay, this is, this is my dream. I want to leave abroad. Okay. I don't yeah. want to live in Brazil. I love my country. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, I love the country, like the people, the, the food, the climate, it's amazing, the weather over there. But uh, I have some like personal like preferences that, to fit more my lifestyle. Oh, sure. So in 2017, going back to the conversation, I I graduated for the engineer and I was like kind of not enjoying what I did because I was feeling stuck. I had the company there and all the collaborators that I had to help and all the things that I had to take care of. And I was like, okay, if I keep doing that, will I be able to move to the US mm, and okay. move the company or not? And the answer was simple, no, I couldn't. That's when I bumped into a, a advertisement from a guru on the internet. He was like offering an, a, a, a partnership kind of, but now I understand like uh, inside of the affiliate world that it, he was offering a, a biz op offer. He uh, had a, yep. a, a mentor, a kind of a course, and he was paying like 35% to promote his course. And he was like, you can do like $2,000 every single month. And I said, well, maybe I can do that. So I started to learn like back then uh, Facebook ads and Google ads at the same time. Okay, gotcha. So, and I started to promote his products on the Google ads and I started to make some sales. And so, sorry, was this the kind of model? I think I'm familiar with it, right? Where it's like, they sell you on the course and then the, how do they make the money is almost promoting the same product again. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I started to make some money. At the end of 2018, I made over like eighteen thousand oh, wow, dollars nice. on the things. Yeah. I was like working really hard, mm -hmm. and I sold my car, and I was like in bank debt, like on the credit cards, like putting the on, like <laughs> okay, I have to make this happen. I was like uh, at the edge, and I make the 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 money, and then I came here to to the U.S. You know. That's when I started to, okay, like I can leave and like make a fortune with this. Okay. Not survive, yeah. like and pay the bills. Okay, like I can do that. 
too, but I can make like a life changing. That's the you saw like, the potential to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, I said, look, oh my God, like I have a huge scale over here, like something that I never saw in engineer in any profession in Brazil. Oh, I see. Okay. Then I said, like, I'm moving to the U.S. and my family and everyone was, are you crazy? <laughs> are you crazy? Did you have any family or friends in the states, or is it? I just have one uncle. He one lives uncle? in California. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but you're in Orlando, right? Yeah, so yeah. Orlando, I'm in Florida. So like, it's me and God. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> I don't have yeah. like family and friends and like because most of the people that come to U.S. they have like someone to support them. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm waiting for you here. I have a sister. I have a my mom lives there, but not my ki- my case. I came here with the the face and the courage. Gotcha. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all. And when I arrived here, like I started to search for other platforms to get more streams of income on okay. the affiliate world. Mm-hmm. That's when I found ClickBank. And I remember taking the the, the Spark course. Hey, yeah, okay, yeah, it's like, yeah. And I was doing the, the DIY offers. Oh, sure, like, like yeah, the Ted's Woodworking. Ted's Woodworking, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. So did you do the... The challenge, I think it was like a seven day challenge thing. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I put the, the Facebook ads campaigns to run with the mm-hmm. interest based and everything. And they said, okay. And Ben said, like, let it run. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch it. Like, just let it run and you're going to just start to start to see some sales. And when I saw those $47, like $80, and I said, whoa, I can, like, I wasn't, I wasn't promoting the, the the business opportunity anymore okay because yeah. i had some problems with the payments you mm-hmm. know they are taking too much time to pay and i was looking for was a, like a self-hosted program somewhere so they were yes yeah, yeah. because i think they they, they closed the the payout like every 30 days so my my money to keep investing you know yeah you're to keep the cash scaling flow the cash was, flow yeah. exactly was like broke mm-hmm. and i i had the sales and i didn't have the money to reinvest yeah and I was looking for a, a serious platform that no one was talking bad about the pay well, the payouts. Gotcha. Yeah. That's when I found ClickBank and I did the Spark course and like, okay, are go, they going to pay me? You know, like we're always like <laughs> the first commissions. Yeah, like, oh, uh, is, yeah. is this real? You know, <laughs> like ha, ah, gotcha. No. Yeah, <laughs> we got paid. I trust. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, and the money arrived. I'll never forget on a Saturday. You guys like closed and and Saturday the money was mm-hmm. like on the account. And I was like, whoa, they're, they're paying weekly. Yeah. Man, yeah. that's awesome. Like in Brazil, usually the people receive uh, their payroll like at the end of the month. Oh, for like their normal job? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. It's not like here in the US. It's like a, usually it's a two week kind of, yeah. Two mm-hmm. week. So you have like, it's, it's a really good way to, to do the things because you, you can see the money coming in and yeah. coming out. It's, it's pretty fast. And I said, okay, like I now have to, to, search for more knowledge, more books. And I started to to really dive in into my skill. That's what I, w- one of the things that I learned from the guru that I was selling the courses, it's you have to have knowledge. You have to have like skills, you have to study. Like I was mentioning earlier, it's like studying for a, a math test exam, you know? You cannot do, keep doing the exam like over and over again. You have to study. Right. stop and hire a teacher okay teach me because i don't know how to do it so we have to be humble sometimes we're we don't perceive that way but sometimes we're arrogant in our heads you know like i know already i know already i don't yeah. need anyone i can figure things out on my own and that's a big mistake yeah i want, I want to dive into that before we do i forgot to do the wine pour which kyle's gonna yell at me about since he's not here but <laughs> <laughs> sorry kyle um new to doing that part for you but the no i picked up a merlot you said last night at dinner you prefer a merlot i think yes i hope I heard, yeah, we're across the sure. big table so i'm pretty sure that's what you said yes yes exactly merlot it's and in honor of your big leaps you've been making i got the stag's leap here from the it's not from the nampa valley as <laughs> Uh, <laughs> As you mentioned yes, last night, yes, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, so the Nampa Valley is here in Boise, which um, my coworkers will definitely back me up on. Uh, this is from the Napa Valley, a little lesser known area in California, but this is a Merlot. I want to just pour you a little bit here. I know it's morning, so we don't have to do too heavy a pour. Yeah, I think Merlot morning should be a thing. Yeah, right. Yes, exactly. Maybe not. Change for the coffee, <laughs> but and then 
You remind me, what's a cheers in Portuguese? Saúde. Salude. Salude. Yes. That one sounds closer. Salude. Saúde. <laughs> Saúde. Yeah. Saúde. Saúde? Yeah. So Saúde? Saúde. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Delicious. Nampa Valley rules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We do have a very good wine out here in Boise or around the Treasure Valley here. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The sun, the sun side. Yes. This, yeah, as you mentioned. Well, that's what... Clarissa, Clarissa, Clarissa calls it, but yeah, the Nampa yeah. Valley is what everyone else calls it. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talk about the big, I'm curious with the big leaps that you've been making and like the, you know, there's a lot of skeptics out there when they're looking at, exactly. um, mm -hmm. and even there might be skeptics before they start, they might've started and they're still skeptical. Um, I'm curious how you balance the listening to the quote unquote gurus mm -hmm. um, and taking action while learning, and this is a messy question, but how do you approach trusting who you're listening to and then implementing without getting stuck in just the, just the learning cycle and just the doing without improving cycle, if that makes sense. Like how do, I guess, how do you approach learning and executing in a way that lets you keep Amazing advancing? question. I have the perfect answer because this is, this is the main stream of my content right now look at how do you learn i like to i think it's not from when you learn from how from who you learn mm. it's if they are doing it or not a lot of people in the internet are teaching something that they don't do themselves on a daily basis and that's a problem okay you know yeah. it's like a bodybuilder you know that it's not so what, He's out of shape. Yeah, you don't you trust know? a fat bodybuilder. You don't trust a skinny chef, right? No, like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, like, if if you're gonna, okay, I have to learn how to be a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. You're gonna hire a bodybuilder. I'll hire you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can ask him, like, okay, like, how many championships do you mm -hmm. want? Okay, yeah. I have the trophies here. Yeah. Okay, I can trust you, because that's what always looking for mentors and courses and like learning from people they are they did the results, they had the results, yeah. and they show the results on the screen. Because I don't trust their, the word, you know? I don't trust someone like, oh, I'm doing that. And I said, can you show me? Can you show me? Oh, yes, I can show you the screen, here's the ads, here's the, the commissions, here's the everything. That's okay, like, you have my trust now. I can keep learning. So this is the, the main principle that I take when I'm learning from someone. I mentioned like I have a I had a neighbor his name is William mm -hmm. and he was he was one of the guys he was like a key in my business because he was the real deal. He didn't have any courses and he was like investing 5 6000 dollars a day on ads. Right. And Lucas this is how I pay my bills. Is it, was this a neighbor in Brazil or in Orlando? Here in Orlando. In Orlando he lives yeah. in Orlando right now and he moved like to Davenport. Okay. I think, yeah. And I was like always talking to him. And when I was talking to him, I could see the reality. He said, Lucas, this is, let me show me your campaigns. Mm -hmm. And he opened the Facebook ads, his Facebook ads. And I was seeing the numbers, the, the CPCs, the CPMs, how much he invested, mm. the ROI in front of me. And I said, okay, I can trust this guy. And you'd already been doing some of this yourself, right? Like, so you'd already been starting a bit. Um, so you had some baseline knowledge. You could see that he was at a level ahead of you that you could. Yes, okay. like he's uh, in another universe. He's on the e-commerce side. Mm -hmm. But I was lo always looking for different knowledges on the drop shipping, on the e-commerce, you know, like different kind of business. They always have something to, to give to you in your business you know, gotcha. yeah. in affiliate marketing world, yeah. because some of the principles, they can work on e-commerce and they, okay, I can borrow this principle and apply it to my affiliate marketing business and take off. Yeah, And that's what's happened. So I was always looking for mentors, courses, studying a lot. I always talk to my students and the people that I met, like, Lucas, how did you get there? Study. You have to study. Yeah, It's like the math test, you know, like you cannot be good at math without studying. You have to study mathematics. Yeah. You have to. It's okay, I don't like it. It's hard. You have to have focus. I know that's the, tr the harsh reality, but you have to do it. Yeah. 
With so was it just a random coincidence that you were moved into a place next to Will, or did you like how did you meet him? Was it just friendly neighborhood chat, like oh hey, welcome to the neighborhood. What do you do, kind of oh, thing? Oh okay, like, yeah. okay. I had uh, my next door neighbor. He was Brazilian too. His name is Marco. Mm-hmm. He was a good like, advertiser too. And he said, "Sounds like you just moved to a community of media buyers." Now. Yes, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's That's like, like how destiny works, you know. Yeah. Like when you have like a, a, I believe those things. Like when you want to start something or you you have a dream that you can start seeing something, I think you have to do it, you know, because the those things like can bring magic to the thing, you know. And when I moved to the U.S. and like everyone saying you're crazy, and I like follow my heart, it seems like the universe like gave me something, you know, yeah. like. Just they say that uh, fortune favors the bold. Mm-hmm. It's so true. Yeah, it's kind of, I can't remember the psychological principle, right? But when you buy a car, you start seeing that car all over the place a little bit. It's like that, it's different, right? But when you are looking for something and you're open to the possibility of that thing, you start to see it and get it more, right? Yes, like exactly, that, you see yeah, more. You see the opportunity there. And so it's, yeah, maybe the conversations are naturally developing a little faster than they would have if you weren't actively looking for that actively thing looking. yeah it's exactly. like that so i'm curious like what did you strike a like formal mentorship mentee relationship with these guys or was it um like how did that dynamic kind of form okay so like uh actually everything happened on the on the cafeteria on the lobby of the building <laughs> i met marco he was my next oh like i just like an apartment advertisements kind of yeah as yeah. apartment mm-hmm. complex mm-hmm. Oh, like Ken was talking about, and I said, oh, I'm a bit of buyer, like I'm doing affiliate marketing, I'm working for ClickBank, they, I'm making some commissions, I'm making some money, but I want to scale to a higher level. And he said, you know, Lucas, I have a, there's another Brazilian living here, his name is William, he's really good at it. Have you talked to him? And I said, no, I have to introduce you, you know? And then like two weeks later, I was there like talking with the guy, like, and I'm 34, and he was, we was 23. He's really young. Okay, yeah. So it's like and I said, <laughs> oh, my God, like, and he was, I don't know, but, like, uh, the younger people these days, they are they pick up things so fast. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, you know, like, he had so much knowledge. And he said, look, as I did this, I did this, that, and you're, like, always studying. The guy was always studying. He was like a machine, like learning, always improving and doing mentors. Like he, we connected because I was the same kind of type, you know. So we develop a friendship. And at some point I said, listen, Will, I really value your knowledge, you know. I want to pay for it. No, man, you have don't have to. Like, you're my friend, you know. And at some point I said, listen, I want to pay you because this is so value. And we start to do some weekly calls, so he bring things from the e-commerce and he opened my Facebook ads manager and said, listen, this is what you have to do. This is the metrics that you have to control. And he talked about me, the CPMs. The so CPMs, Because yeah. your CPMs, it's through the roof, man. You're not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to control this, this metric here, specifically this metric here. And then he, dis- he said, like, I know that you have to control, but I don't ha- know... How to control How do I do that? Yeah, it's like, yeah. in your universe. Mm-hmm. I know to control in my universe because my niche is different. My creatives are different. My audience are different. He always doing, uh, he was doing TikTok ads too, really hard. He was learning mm-hmm. to do the TikTok ads. And I said, okay, I have this piece of information. Now I have to look for someone else that knows how to control. And I was like typing on the internet, like, how to control the CPMs on the ad accounts and everything. And another mentor popped up, pop, popped up on my, like, the algorithm, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah like, yeah. Mm-hmm. and I saw a guy, a young guy, too, and he was like, I know how to make some phase tests to control these metrics, and I have a methodology. And I said, hmm, maybe I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a look at his course. And when I look at his course, his video sales letter, he showed his Facebook ads. Oh, cool. Okay. His ad yeah. accounts. And I yeah. said, okay, remember, like, mm-hmm. I, I only, like, okay, I can trust this guy. And I, uh, I bought the course, and immediately he was showing his ad accounts and showing the numbers. This is how you control. 
and another piece of information like started to to connect. Yeah. I'm it's like a puzzle. It's like it a is, puzzle. Yeah. You know? I'm curious when you look at courses, it sounds like you aren't shy on spending money to get either mentorship or courses. When you buy a course, are you looking to consume like, I want to know this full thing? Or are you trying to find like more of a specific item in that course that is the current problem for you? Yes. When I buy a course, like I said, this mantra in my life, like focus is power. Mm -hmm. I take the course and for the next few days, I make a immersion, you know, like three days watching everything mm -hmm. at once. And I said, okay, I know how the structure, how is the blueprint of the course. Then I watch again and now looking for the specifics. And yes, like I don't like save money to invest on my knowledge. I invest like really, really hard, Into, like on mentors, yeah. like masterminds. Some people, they are like trying to hold the money. Oh, I'm not going to invest on the course, on the mastermind. But they spend like $300 on a pair of shoes. Right. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So I always invested on those things and I watch the course and I take the pinpoints, something that's working. And I apply it right away and I look for the next one. Always looking for the and books too. The Russell yeah. Brunson, like the Jim Edwards mm -hmm. is a master on copywriting. The Great Leads, the book Great Leads for Michael Marcus, yes. Master yeah. Song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this is another like tip for someone that is watching. Pay attention to your copy. Your copy, yeah. it's the secret sauce. I was curious, like when you're going through the because it sounds I think you're hitting some key things. I'd love to just highlight for some listeners real fast. Like, right? Like because some people are like, oh, well, he got lucky. He moved in next to someone, right? And like, there's mm -hmm. like, oh, he got, right? Oh, well, I don't know anyone. So, right. But it's the, the point is, I think that game respects game. If you're actively doing and sharing what you're doing and excited about it, right? You're connecting with people who are like, oh, I know someone who does that, right? Mm -hmm. Like people want to yes. help you get to the next level. Like people intrinsically want to help other yes. people. And if you're sharing that and excited about it, and talking about the success or the failures or whatever it is, like the struggles, like, oh, well, hey, let me introduce you to Will, right? <laughs> like mm -hmm. those kind of things happen mm -hmm. organically, but you do have to put yourself out there and be sharing that kind of thing for it to be able to happen. And yes. the other key part that you're doing too is that you're investing in knowledge and mentorship and courses, um, offering to pay for something structured with Will, right? Because people are, I'm always shocked at how willing people in this industry are to share right and what would be considered maybe a competitor or even like you know oh why would they waste the time to help me kind of thing people are very often willing to share a ton of knowledge with somebody yes it's so true mm -hmm. so true and like you said he maybe didn't even want you to pay him or anything but you offering to do it almost cements it into something that's more structured right mm -hmm. and then it's like okay no we can do this on a weekly cadence for x many months or weeks and then it kind of builds in that structure so there's commitment on both sides Exactly. And then what you're doing, it sounds like, is you're investing in the courses on a regular basis, the knowledge, the books, but you're actually implementing what you're learning while you're doing it and then going find the next thing that's a blocker. Is that fair to say? Yes, I'm always implementing, like testing. Uh, we talked about the knowledge part. Now let's do like talk about the doing yeah. part. Yes, yeah. that's, I'm an action taker, mm -hmm. like massively. All my students, all the people that knows me, they know I'm like a really hard worker. So study just 20% and 80% like just action. grinding, like yeah. action, 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 action. Because the people are, today are they absorbing so much knowledge, it didn't put into practice. Mm -hmm. And I always like testing. I was spending like money on my ad accounts like crazy sometimes when I could. And when I couldn't, I have to hold it back sometimes. But I tested everything that you can ever imagine, like copies, headlines, and creatives, like offers, everything. Like I have over today maybe 30 ad accounts mm -hmm. on testing. Like, And I hired like some people because as was so much work to do, I had to hire someone like, Listen, like I need help because it's so much data to analyze what? that I had to. Is there, if you're willing to share it, if not, feel free to speak in generalities, but at what kind of like 
revenue or profit level did you bring someone in to help? Like, where were you at where you're like, okay, I'm going to pay someone and bring them in as an employee? Because that's a big step that a lot of people never take. Even, even successful media, I know a lot of successful media buyers that are even like running bigger than yourself, right? And they haven't hired anyone yet to help. And they're trying to do everything themselves. Yes, like, yes. Like, what, yeah, where was that point for you that you're like, okay, I needed someone to come in for this task? Okay, so the structure is really basic. Like, mm-hmm. I was doing only Facebook ads, like I said, one vertical, health niche, the supplements offers on Facebook. Mm-hmm. That's what I, that's where I made all the money, all the money. I, I know how to do Google ads, YouTube ads, I know it. But focus is power once more. And I said, okay, I have to deal with ad account shutdowns for the supplements offers. That that's a reality. Because okay, so you were getting ads, ad accounts shut down by Facebook. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's that's where a lot of people give up. Exactly, point Thomas. Yeah. Like you're so right. That's when the people like one shut down, another one. Because when yeah. you're testing, you're putting yourself into the water. Well, sorry, there's, it's curious too. A lot of people don't even start because they're afraid they're going to get shut down because uh-huh. that's a thing. And I was I spoke at uh, one of Robin Gary's. Uh, mm-hmm. San Diego events, and I was shocked that it was a room of like 600 people, and someone asked from stage like, "Who hasn't run an ad yet?" It was most of the room, and this was that this was people who had taken the course, people who had come into San Diego to learn more about it, and no one had actually implemented running an ad yet. I was blown away. I thought I was surrounded oh. by people implementing already. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, <laughs> people are, yes, and everyone was just like, "Well, what about my ad account getting shut down?" And they were terrified of it. Yes. Right? So that's that is a it's a big blocking point for people either to start or they start and then it gets shut down for some mm-hmm. reason. What can you tell those people as much as you're willing to share around that kind of yeah for sure point? like yeah. like uh, one of the the principles of my content when I put in Portuguese like I share everything mm-hmm. you know because and sorry I don't I don't think we've mentioned that like so you have a YouTube channel and a course yourself right yes yes and, I have a YouTube channel in Portuguese that I teach I'm the first one Brazilian like teaching this like mm-hmm. around the world mm-hmm. and I am the mentor of the first community in the world focused and exclusive for Brazilians yes. okay. learning how to make money on Clickbank with dollars you know because it's a life changing it was life changing with me and when I share on my YouTube channel and I, that's why I want to share with the audience too it's, I don't hide information. Mm. I don't believe that, oh, okay, some people like, they know how to do it, but they try to hide because they don't want competitors, right? And or that's not my sell real. the course, right? Exactly, <laughs> yes, yeah, they want yeah. to sell something. Yeah. Um, so they're not giving the information for free. Mm-hmm. So what I, uh, the, the ad account shut down. You're gonna be shut down, like you're gonna be blocked. Like, yeah. It's not, uh, uh, there's a mentor said that. Not a matter uh, of if, but when. When. I mean, yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. Like, it's, don't worry about it. It's like going to a war and say, like, am I going to be shot? For <laughs> Guess uh, what? Yeah. Yes, you know, yeah. like sometimes, yes, but you're not going to be dead. That's the, the point of the shutdowns. Mm-hmm. When you deal with the shutdowns, the first shutdowns that I had, I was like, oh my God, I couldn't sleep. I woke up and I opened the email and I said, like, your ad account was restricted. I was like, oh my God. It happened again. <laughs> and that's when the point, and I said, okay, I'm going to do the ClickBank Platinum. If I want to get there, I have to treat this like a business. I have to take serious steps and serious actions. And I was always that type of guy that wanted to do all by myself, you know, because I didn't want to spend money, to like to save for the ads. And I said, okay, I had someone that I knew She's from Brazil. And I said, listen, uh, I can't pay much. You know, I just like have a small amount that I can pay. And I need you like to 24-7 warm up the ad accounts for me. Okay. Then I bought a server in Brazil. And I put all the ad accounts on that server. And she was like basically doing that 24-7 when for me. When you're warming them up, does that just mean running like some basic like campaigns? Or like like some, campaigns. Okay, so yeah. she was creating mm-hmm. the the profiles. Here's another tip. Uh, some people, they like to, that's my structure. Okay, I'm, I'm going to like sh- mm-hmm. show you. Like I don't want to hide information. My structure right now, Thomas, I I don't share pixels, pages, BMs, and net accounts. So each profile that I have, it's one a proxy. Okay. Okay, so... I rent 
a, a, a Facebook profile because this is legal. Mm -hmm. Okay, you cannot buy someone someone else's profile, right. but you can rent it. And so what's, can, the, what's the difference there when you're renting someone's profile? Like if you're Thomas, let me rent your profile. What does that mean? Exactly? Uh, yeah. Like I can go to someone that has a Facebook profile mm -hmm. and they don't want to run ads. Sure. Like they like don't know even 99.9% of the Facebook users don't, right? Exactly. Yeah, so. <laughs> so I can say, listen, I'm going to use your ad account to, to run my ads mm -hmm. and here's the disclaimers and everything. Can I pay you like a monthly fee in that. Rios, you know, because we use that our value. Our currency is undervalued. So I was making in dollars and pay the, those people in, in reals. Gotcha, yeah. So it's like just a small yeah. amount. It's like a really small amount. And I rented this, their profiles. And are, and are they like making you like a business administrator or something? Or are you just logging in as them into the business side of it? I was just like logging on the business side of mm -hmm. it and putting to a proxy. And I was warming up the whole profile. Gotcha. Okay. And I isolate them. So if I had like a profile like Lucas profiles or Thomas profiles, mm -hmm. and I was like doing everything, I didn't want to share the pixel, you know, like sometimes I have a really warmed up pixel sure, and yeah. I want to share it to other, other that account, that's when the shutdowns happen. Right. Because then you sh share those things, it, it raises out dots, red right? flags. Yeah. So you're warming up a brand new pixel in these accounts. Yeah. Brand new pixel, brand new ba uh, uh, BM, the, the, the domain, everything was there like an ecosystem, mm -hmm. isolated. Gotcha. So if I had like 30 profiles, it's 30 pixels, 30 domains, 30 pages. It's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 So I had to, uh, this this lady, her name is Camila. She's a, an amazing person. She's like an amazing person. And like she wanted to learn to like, Lucas, like how do you make like dollars online? Is this possible? Is this real? And she started to see the ad accounts and I said, oh my God, man. I didn't know this. It's a holy universe. Yeah. It's 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 huge, and she started to pick up some interest for the warm uping stuff. And then I later I taught her how to do it. Mm. Now she's doing four thousand dollars a day. Whoa! Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> yes. And just, awesome. I don't want yeah. to do the job anymore. Yeah. You can hire someone. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I'm good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I'm very excited for yeah. like for her growth mm -hmm. because she. She picked up, like, I remember, like, hiring her, like, she knew nothing. And she started to warm up the ad accounts, and then I had this problem solved. Okay, yeah, I don't have, like, problems with shutdowns anymore. Then I started to focus on what really mattered, the copy, a unique copy, a unique hook. The hook, Thomas, is everything on the copy. If you have a good copy, if you're listening to me, like if you have a good copy, if you want to spend, if the copy is converting, mm -hmm. you're making sales, okay, you're 80% ahead. So that's the point when the people start to test trash against trash. Mm -hmm. There's some, do some tweaks on Facebook. Oh no, I think it's Instagram. Like let's change the country. Let's change the age. Like those small tweaks, it's not going to work, you know? So the, the next step, and this was huge for me, Okay, the copy is the most important thing. But what part of the copy? The lead. Yeah. So that's when the book Great Leads came into play. When you say the lead, play. are you being the main headline? The, the first two sentences of the copy, how you start yeah. the story, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? And then I started I'm to sorry, test. Sorry, I, I want to paint a little word picture for the listeners. Like, are you running? What's the main type of ad you're running? Is it like an image ad? Is it a video ad, a carousel? Like, what's kind of the main type of ad you're running? So on use, uh, I usually run image ads, mm -hmm. but I, run, I ran uh, video ads before. Okay. But the video ads, they had a, a higher CPM. Ah, okay. That's what I, I figured out on my tests. Images at a lower CPM. Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, but this can change in the future, you know? So I you had, think? like, video, videos in before, but now, like, the images are performing really better. Gotcha. Um, so you run the image ad, and then the copy you're talking about is the headline above the image ad. Yes, it's yeah. the, the image ad, yes, and uh, the copy is, is above the, mm -hmm. the image, and they have the headline at yeah. the bottom. Okay, yes. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So if you have a good headline, a good image, it's, like, doing some metrics okay and converting. Mm -hmm. If the back metrics of the funnel, it's working like the offer, it's converting like 20, 22% on the order form impressions mm -hmm. and like 1.5, 2% on hop conversion rate. Mm -hmm. If you're at those levels, usually like around 50, 35 hops per sale, mm -hmm. that's a good number. Okay. And okay, 
but my CPCs are high. How can I reduce that? So the people start to test a lot of images. That yep. was a mistake that I did. Like I tested over 200 images, 200. Sure, that's where honestly my brain would probably go. It's like, that's the biggest thing there, right? So test yeah. The images, yeah. But when you pick the curiosity, the people who stop the scroll, the image or the video on the ad, they have one specific goal to stop the scrolling. Mm -hmm. After that, your copy comes into play. And the most important part, it's the beginning of the story. Mm -hmm. So the two sentences on your copy, it's like everything. And when I started to test the hooks, Thomas, like it was a game changer. I was doing like CPCs of $1.50, $1.20. When I changed only the two sentences of the copy, I started to get CPCs of 50 cents, Whoa, 60 cents. And that's things pick up like yeah. speed. And I started to see like some real profit. And then I lose the fear to invest. Because what your EPC was probably what in the dollar plus range a little bit. So you're probably maybe break even before. Now you're. Yes. Now actually my EPCs was around like $4. Oh, wow. Okay. Pretty like high. Three yeah. to $4. That's pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. Does because that stay, does you scale or does that come down a little bit for the EPC? Yes, when I scaled, it came down to 331, 337. Still really good. Yes, yeah. that's mm -hmm. really, uh, the worst days, 286. Okay. You know, but like usually around like 380. Wow. Okay. So $3 earning per click. Exactly. And, and is like, there like a band that your cost per click is kind of staying in? So my cost per click on the ads were like 60 cents. My landing pages were converting. Uh, 42 percent so people I was hitting like, your bridge page or landing page yeah pre-lander yes so you got 100 people landing on your pre-lander bridge page um you've got 40 people ish clicking over to the sales page yes okay. and for the 40 yes every like 40 to 50 people they were were buying the product mm -hmm. it's because it was a high season too you know the yeah. summer it really it really good too for the supplements offer and that hook was a uh a game changer. And yeah. I learned that from the guy. Which guy? Uh, yeah. That I told uh, about the course, he was showing me the, oh, yes. yeah, yeah. the CPMs, you yeah. know? He said like, listen, you have to test hooks. And then, okay, okay, I have a book that I read already, The Great Leads. Mm -hmm. That book is specifically for the hooks. Great Leads, and who wrote that? that was... uh, Michael Masterson. Okay, yeah. Michael Masterson, yes. Yeah, Great Leads by Michael Masterson, yeah. yeah. I know I haven't read it yet, but I know Alex Ramosi just launched his $100 million leads book, which is it's really popular, broke people's yeah. brains. <laughs> but yes, exactly. <laughs> the way the launch funnel did anyway. But um, and his million dollar offers book, I think, is incredible. So it's like there's. Do you have any? You mentioned some before, but what are some of the top books you're kind of recommending for copy specifically? Okay, the copywriting secrets from Jim Edwards. Mm -hmm. uh, they have one in Brazil, the architecture of copy. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a American book, but they translated in Portuguese, and I bought in Portuguese. Gotcha. The architecture of copy, the copywriting secrets, and the great leads. Okay. Yeah. But the great leads, it's the most powerful one. The most powerful one because gotcha. they have like the specifics for the for the lead of the copy, for the hook. That's the beginning of the copy. The two sentences, like it's like a, like yeah. it's like a trailer of the movie, you know. It like is, if yeah. you're watching like a trailer of the movie, if the trailer is not interested. Could, could you explain for why is that lead so important? Because like, we know it is, and I think we know why. But like for someone listening, like okay, but why does a, why do those two sentences matter so much? It's because that's when you raise the curiosity. Like for people love stories. Mm -hmm. Story like is everything. Like if you think about your life, like most people that you bought something, like you trust someone, is because you know their story. And usually, like the story has to be interesting for you to read, and the lifespan of people's attention today is like three or four seconds yeah. or something. So if you like pick the curiosity for the two first sentences of the story, what happened when like the person was before the transformation of the product, like, okay, like, this is really interesting. And we start the story, the lead, it's, it's the beginning, you know, it's and the beginning. It's like, is there a type of pre-lander you like to make? Is it like, what's, what are you doing in that pre-lander to get people to the offer page? Oh, the story lander, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Some people they use like here's another tip. Um, I tested like dozens and dozens of like pre lenders, like everything that you think of. I even hired a designer mm -hmm. to build lenders for me, like real good designer. 
And that's that was mind blowing for me because I made some uh, lenders. They were like so beautiful. And I watched a video on ClickBank channel, YouTube channel, that Michael was saying, the most common mistake is people trying to sell the product on the pre-lender. And I was... <laughs> yeah, I was talking about exactly the guy I was at the ClickBank Connects last night. I started, it's like, it's like yeah, it's like you, people are running ad images that. with the product. They're running stuff on, they're trying to sell on the pre-lander. They're talking all about the product, how great it is. It's like, no, stop that. Like, <laughs> yes, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was exactly what I was trying to do, mm-hmm. to sell on the landing page. Mm-hmm. And I saw that video on the ClickBank channel, YouTube channel. I was like, oh my God. Okay, let me make some tweaks here. Then I removed the all well-designed landing pages and some of those uh, short lenders too. Because the short lenders, they will have like 60, 70% conversion. You have a lot of hops, no checkouts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or yeah. even the checkout, the conversion checkouts, it's going to be like 10%, 15%. I know all the numbers because like, yeah. I breathe this. So the short lenders, they were not working so well for the supplements. Which a newer affiliate would think, oh, my pre-lender is working. I'm getting 60 or 40%. It's the offer that's not converting. Yes, and right? it's not. It's like, no, if that's the break in your data, mm-hmm. you're framing up the offer probably wrong or you're getting interest-based clicks, not intent-based clicks. Like there's things, something wrong with the way you're either framing up the ad or the lead mm-hmm. or the bridge page to get traffic to the lander. Like, because if you're promoting a top offer, we we're talking about this before. If you're promoting a top offer on ClickBank, you can know it's selling well. Yes. So if you're getting a lot of hops to an offer that's not selling, there's something wrong with the traffic hitting that page. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, I I did this mistake like many many times. Like, okay, the lender is converting, and when I was like seeing like lenders like thirty percent, I was like, oh, this number is not good. But when I look at the back end metrics, and they were amazing, I said, well, like. Now the, the pre-lender is making their job. It's that connect with the story. That's when I removed all those like short landing pages and I put like a big story landing page and it was really big. Mm-hmm. And the bottom at the top, the, the button at the, at the bottom of the page. Gotcha. Some people, yeah. they go, oh, I want the click, you know, like yeah, let's yeah. put the, the button at, on the top. So you're sending, you're doing a big story I assume you're taking some inspiration from the video sales letter or the long form sales letter that you're promoting. Um, and then you're sending to a, this VSL and long form from there. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, so the copy was long. I was always afraid like to create like long copy. So you're kind of stretching out the buying process, right? Or like exactly. the conversion process. Now people have to read your whole pre-lander, the, get to the, the buy or to the click through. And now they're at a 40 minute plus VSL potentially. Yes. Right. Or a long sales letter. So yeah, people are always surprised. Like, oh, there's no way that's gonna work. I need to get people through. Yes, but it's not. You know, sometimes like you can make huge money with like low conversions. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. At some point of my scale point, I think when I was like doing, uh, when I hit the thirty-seven thousand dollars a day goal, mm-hmm. that was like, wow. And like I was le- looking at the the ClickBank. I'll never forget that my. Conversion was like 28, 28 hops per sale. Oh, wow. Okay. It yeah. was like mind blowing. <laughs> I was like, okay. You tapped uh, something good there. Yeah. It's like, yeah. With uh, CPC around like 70 to 50 cents. And my, my lender was converting like 36 to 42. 36, 36 to 42%. To 42%. Percent. Click through to the sales yes. page. And I was, yeah, I was making like really good profit. Yeah, because that's the name of the game, right? If you can drive clicks cheaper than your earnings, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's profit. If CPC is lower than EPC, you're scaling Mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. You sound sound, sounds like you found a really good band where that's a very healthy margin right now. You can continue to push that because yeah, it's funny. I chat with some of the biggest affiliates on ClickBank right now. I ask like, what margin are you comfortable running? They're like, oh, five percent. You know, we'll even run zero if it's break even because it's data. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) yes. Like, and they're just. Yeah, they're like, yeah, we'll run single margin, single percent margins. You know, we'll spend 100 to make 105. We're, we're fine with that because they're it, spending yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars a day. <laughs> so the profit builds up, right? So it's like, yes, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. And you have to have this like mindset of like slow and steady mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah. As we, as we wrap up here, I guess, what would you, if someone's, they're trying to get, they've been trying, they've had intermittent success or no success yet. Like, what would you tell them 
and to kind of encapsulate this right now. Okay. The if like you give me like Lucas Lucas a recipe. There's no recipe, but one platform, one vertical, one offer, one offer. That's it, and one ad platform. People are trying to like dominate Tabula and Google Ads and Facebook Ads at the same time. It's not going to work. Simple as that. You're you're a human being. You cannot like dominate each platform. They have so many things to learn. It's impossible to dominate like three or four of them at once. It's impossible. Yeah. So like if you choose like just one platform. And especially like when the things start to get hard on that platform, that's when happened on Facebook in 2020, like mm -hmm. the shutdowns were like crazy. Yeah. Everyone abandoned the platform and ran to the Google. Yeah, they went to YouTube. Yeah, YouTube ads have yes. exploded. Yeah. <laughs> and I was yeah. there. I stood mm -hmm. there. I was like, okay, I'm going to defend my, my post here. I'm here and I'm going to be like, okay, like, look, I'm getting ad account shutdowns like every week. Okay, I'm going to come up with a plan because focus is power to stay on Facebook because I'm trying every single day that I keep doing this on Facebook, I dominate the Facebook ads and I keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward. And when the people start to see those challenges, they give up. Yeah. Just don't give up. Like just persist. There's a gold mine at the end of the tunnel. I promise <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I a, the tell people it's, there's no, there's really no secret sauce. Right, no. it's the time in the game, and it's learning those skills, and you can't really speed it up. Like some people get lucky, right, and they run some ads and they convert really well, really quickly, and they scale faster than someone else, right. But it's still they still have to learn the skills, they still have to get better at it. Yeah. So, Lucas, where can uh, people go to learn more about you, follow you, subscribe, all that kind of stuff? Like, where can they find you online if they want to? Maybe maybe have to learn Portuguese, but. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, my Instagram, like my Instagram and my Facebook, uh, my Instagram and my YouTube channel are the main sources. Like the people can connect to me. My Instagram is my first and last name Lucas Lino L I N O, and you're gonna see my face over there. Like the the other one is Peixoto P E I X O T O. So it's Lucas Lino Peixoto. That's my 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 Instagram and my YouTube channel, you can say, you can type it, Lucas Lino, L-I-N-O, and you're going to find my YouTube channel awesome. over there. I really share, like, some real good content over there. The real deal. You do, yeah, I mean, I don't understand Portuguese, but I was clicking yeah, through, yeah. like, a stream you did yesterday, and you're drawing out the whole funnels. You're really, I can tell you're going deep into how things are working, which I think is really exactly, powerful yeah. for people. And then we have a lot of a very broad base of listeners. There's everyone. We've got diamond clients that listen. We've got the newbies that listen, right? Like what do you need help with right now? And this might release a little later, but like, what are you looking for right now? Is it new offers you want to promote? Is it a staff member you need to hire? Like are there things that you're looking for help with that someone's listening? We go, Oh, I can be that person or, Oh, I know someone for Lucas. Yeah. It's like, if I said like something that helped like, a real good offer and, you know, like a commission bump. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, like a real good offer that converts so I can scale. That's that's all I need. What niche? Like health niche, like weight loss. Weight loss? It's my main niche. Okay. Yeah, the weight loss. Some people, like, they are running out from, oh, my God, like, weight loss is so hard. It's not making profit anymore. Lies. <laughs> it's making profit. Believe me, defend your post. Focus is power. Okay, so I know some yeah. of you listening right now have weight loss offers, and yes. you're probably going, I would love a media buyer to promote it. Yes, for Lucas sure. might be your guy. So, um, Thank you so much. And if you know me, reach out. We can get you connected to Lucas. But also you can connect over at affiliated at clickbank.com. That's an email address that I sometimes remember to check on a weekly basis. Sometimes don't. Don't yell at me, but <laughs> I'm doing my best. Um, and we'll get you connected if we can. Um, Lucas, thank you so much for your time. It was really cool to see you come to the office. I could tell you were just like, I'm here. Like, yeah, that moment was cool to see. It was, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thomas, for you and for all the ClickBank family, Dylan, like Mike, everyone, Daniel, like everyone, like Kirsten. You guys are really amazing. I have no idea in my mind that I would come here and so be so well received, mm. like a part of the family. And you guys are real. The, the, the same one, guys, that I was seeing on the YouTube channels like three years ago go and say are those guys real i'm here <laughs> it's real yeah oh man i'm gonna thank you me so tear up. much yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like no, the click you, bank yeah. it's it's changing lives it changed my life i can like look in your eyes right now and say you guys changed my destiny
Oh, that's thank you so much. Amazing to hear, Lucas. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you. Yeah, cheers to your health and continued success. And like I always try to wrap up, happy scaling, Lucas. Okay, thanks. Yeah.